Okay, so I'm doing these two back to back because uh, it's sort of a two parter. It's the invasion and the eclipse. And I will admit, one of the downsides of having this on DVD is that you sort of know this is the big attack, the big moment, and there's still two more discs left. Hmm. I gotta take a wild guess and say things aren't going to go according to plan. So that that kind of sucks, but on the other hand, where's it gonna go? And I really enjoy going into this knowing, well, this is like the big climax of any other show or story, but we're only about halfway through this season, so what's going to happen? I don't think they're gonna do like a million endings like in Lord of the Rings. Uh, so what's gonna happen? So it's it's nice knowing there's going to be more, but at the same time, it is sort of like a, ah, you know, it's not going to go according to plan, or the Fire Nation is aware or something. So, uh, that's pretty much what this is. This is the beginning of the invasion, uh, the big attack on the Fire Nation. All these old characters come back together, which is wonderful. Uh, I love seeing a lot of these characters again. Some of them I had to be reminded of, and they do a good job reminding you. Uh, for example, that one kid that, uh, Katara broke out of prison, and his father, like, I totally forgot who he was, and they reminded me, and I'm like, oh, good, and they did in a good way that wasn't pure exposition. In fact, it was very clever. Toph is there, and she goes, who's this? Who's that? And, again, they, they put it all together very nicely, so it would make sense they would have to explain who this is. Uh, <clears throat> it was great seeing the Avenger again. It was great seeing the wrestlers again. I love the fact that the boulder was in there. I don't know why I love the boulder. <laughs> I just love... I, I don't know. It makes me laugh. Um... <clears throat> so, you got this battle going on, you got Aang, Aang finally kisses Katara, well, I mean, that they already sort of did in the cave, but I mean, like, confesses, hey, you know, I'm unbelievably hugely in love with you, and you mean the world, and all that stuff. I, didn't that kind of go without saying in the cave, though? I, I, I don't know about stretching that out, but it was still a very nice, genuine, heartfelt moment. I like that they did it in an action, as opposed to words, and again, it felt like... It, it all came through that one action. Just the kiss was very, very effective. Uh, so I thought that was good. And then he takes off like a motherfucking badass. <laughs> so I love that. It's it's a perfect... It's an epically romantic moment. I, I thought it worked out very, very well. Um, and they have these machines. I always... Something about the machines, like, like the ships and the tanks look a touch strange to me in this world. Um, but it's it's their world. They can sort of do whatever they want. But I, I know what they're going for. It's sort of like, you know, sort of this Asian history uh, uh, type of world. And to, to see sort of like these tanks in there, or whatever those centipede things that went up the stairs, they're cool as hell. Uh, they took me out of touch, but... Nothing too bad. They're still cool. And again, you sort of realize you can get away with this stuff in this kind of show. Uh, seeing the hot air balloons return, that was great. But then seeing that giant ass, holy shit, fuck ship come out behind it was even better. Because you know the balloons are coming back. Uh, you know, they built it up and, okay, well, when are they... When are they going to make the big return? And they do. But to uh, see that other giant ship come behind it, so not only did they master this technology but they pushed it even further that was so great and it makes sense because it's it's the fire nation they have they have more people they have more time they have the empire so it makes sense uh so the battle itself was fun i, I like Sokka sort of taking the reins and leading the battle when his father's out of commission uh there's one moment i did sort of go this this seems a little weird which is I think it's after Aang finds out the Fire Lord is not where he should be, and he comes back in the middle of the battle, and all these... It's like in the middle of this battle, and debris is flying and stuff, and it seemed sort of like the soldiers were just sort of standing around <laughs> while all this stuff is being thrown at them, and granted, they sort of have these, uh, uh, the whatchamacallit, the, the machines sort of blocking them, but... Wouldn't they be ducking a little bit more? Wouldn't there be a little bit more debris? Wouldn't they, or wouldn't the Fire Nation nodes sort of come around the other end? And I, I don't know. I get, that's real nitpicking. Um, it could have been a bit more intense if they were having this argument while sort of screaming at each other and, and debris and stuff is flying, but real nitpicking. Um, I like that Uncle uh, Iroh... Because that, that was another big common thing. It's Iroh! Ah! But hey, hey, a lot of people were saying Suke, and I heard Sokka clearly say Suki in this one. Suki! Is I, uh, okay, okay, I'm... 
I, I, I really don't. <laughs> I, I'm reading more into... I'm being drawn into that name argument, and it's like there's more important things, people. So uh, I'm going to call her Suki from now on because that's what Sokka called her, and I'm, if the show calls her that, that's what I'm calling her. Um... But regardless, I, I love uh, Azula bringing up uh, Suki. Because at first I thought she was talking about, like, uh, Sokka's mother or something. Like, wait a minute, what, was she imprisoned or something? Then we find out Suki is like, oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I, I'll be happy to see. Again, they're leaving that a mystery. Where is she? Is she still a prisoner there? Did she, did they kill her off? It's unlikely they killed her off. But holy shit, wouldn't that be a twist? Wouldn't that be dark? <laughs> um... So, you got that stuff going on. It's a great battle with Azula. It's great seeing these people, uh, even though their powers are, are taken away, uh, that they can still really, really fight. That is to say, the, like, Azula and, and uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Zuko and so forth, uh, they can still fight regardless. I, I like seeing that, because uh, it's just smart. And... I'm sort of wondering, how did they know about the invasion? Did they explain that before? I don't think so. I, I think they're building that up for a reveal later. Uh, but, but that's a good mystery. How did they know? Uh, did they just have spies or whatever? Um, I, I like the Earth Kingdom uh, people coming in, helping Azula. I mean, it's like, I like this was a well-thought-out plan. I like her just having them chase her. Like, again, that was really smart, and how she can work into their emotions and get them pissed off, and, and all that stuff. It's just, it's a great plan. Um, <clears throat> I love that Zuko is finally coming around, and I like that he... It, it seems like he has a chance to kill his father, but he does, and he says that's the Avatar's job. That's his destiny. You could argue, dude, you had him right there. Giant war, come on. But, I don't know, it, it seems like even if they kill the Fire Lord, just... Whatever, next in line, uh, Zula or, or the Prince or whatever. I mean, they're, then they're going to be just... I mean, Zuko would be okay, you know, obviously. But, I mean, he'll... Whatever, they, he'd probably either be assassinated or they take him out or something. I mean, Zula would be the next in power. So, it's like... It seems like either way, they would still be kind of screwed. Um, unless, again, I'm missing something about the bloodline or something. <clears throat> but Zuko's now off and he's going to go fight with the Avatar. So the last thing you see is him following... Uh, following Aang, uh, gonna obviously try to help him on his journey, uh, which is great to see. It's great to see the whole redemption, which you know is coming, but it, it's nice to see it. It's nice to see him really come to that conclusion and be like, okay, let's, let's go all the way with this. Uh, I, I do hope him and the uncle, you know, meet up again. I'm sure they will. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely one of the points. But how, okay, how did the uncle get out of that jail cell, by the way? I mean, that's, that's fucking metal. And he's not, even Toph had to spend like, hours, maybe even, like, days inside that, uh, canister thing. I mean, just by herself, just trying to, you know, hone in on the power of, or the ability and, and the element of metal to bet. How did he get out of that? I don't care how strong he is. That's, I don't know. Maybe they'll show it. Uh, but that I kind of questioned a bit. Uh, but regardless, it was great to see him get out. And, uh, oh, God, what else, what else? The, the big element for me that I really liked that... In <clears throat> most other cases, and this could be... In, in most other cases, I say this is kind of like repetitive writing. And that's that Aang has failed before. He's going in again to redeem himself. And in a sense, he has failed again. Or he's been outsmarted at the very least. Because the Fire Lord is not there and he couldn't fight him and he couldn't fight, uh, uh, defeat him. Uh, so, I like the fact that they're building up this is going to be his big redemption... Any other show or movie, that would be the climax, and he would redeem himself. You know, no, it's payback, and he gets his payback. Uh, and he could die in the process, but he still gets his payback. And it's like, no, he, it, it doesn't even happen. It's another failure. And I think that is important. I think that's an important thing to set up, because I think a lot of people do sort of think, well, next time it'll be different, and it always will be different, and the second time is where you build up all the energy and all the power and all the strategy, and you're gonna win this time, and it, it doesn't always happen, and again, that doesn't always mean give up. Uh, it, there are some times where the writing is on the wall and you have to accept it, and that is sort of what happened here. They could keep looking for the Fire Lord, but they knew people out there could be dying, and they probably are dying, they had to go back and they had to help them, they had to escape, they had to fight another day, and this was supposed to be the big redemption, and it's not. And 
that's just such another tough defeat to take. And on top of that, and now the children are being separated from the parents and Aang has to go off there and he has the responsibility looking after these people and he probably has to hear over and over at least in his head that he has failed them and now the adults are all in prison or being tortured or whatever and it's just so much more to be thrown on him and like I said in any other show I would say this is too repetitive because we've seen this we've seen him be harsh on himself and say I'm not gonna fail again and he fails again, but, you know, that happens. It does happen. And I'm curious to see where they're going to go with that, because they seem to be very good at taking these emotions you think are going to go in a certain direction, or emotions that are going to lead to a certain outcome, and that outcome doesn't happen. And they seem to work with that very well. They seem to know what to do with that and not become too repetitive. So I'm very curious how how they're going to have Aang deal with this. Uh, because this is, in some respects, so much worse than before because he had the time now and he had the ability and everything was set, but he was still outsmarted. And just the amount of pain that's going to cause. And it, it just, it, it made things so much worse because now all these people are in prison and like I said, now he's looking after uh, all the younger people in this group and it's just so painful and I'm curious to see how he's going to get through that. And the big element of the show seems to be that persistence, that when you fail, it, it's all right, it, or it's not even all right, it's just going to happen. You're going to fail and you have to keep finding a way of living with that, whether it's confronting it again or trying to change it or whether you just had to live with it and I like that they're doing this because they're really switching it around with Zuko and Aang and before it was really Zuko that was constantly failing and he had to really question what he was doing it for and and how he was going to do it and, and why and now you have Aang doing the same thing and what are the best moments to do this? What's the worst moment? What's more important in these moments? Uh, where do you go? How do you do it? It's great seeing this sort of switch. And it's not, but it's not super obvious all the time. Uh, like I said, I mean, right now, Zuko, if they wanted to do it, Zuko would still be with the father and he wouldn't confront him. Uh, but instead, he's going to go with the Avatar. So he has an evolution as well in his character, while Aang seems to be falling more and more. Uh, so, I, in terms of achievements, anyway, you know, like I say, he couldn't defeat the Fire Lord, if anything, he's made things worse. So, I like seeing this all sort of balancing out, this sort of balancing act, and it's not always... I was really afraid for a while that just the whole show, all the seasons, was going to be Zuko chasing him. And I'm glad it's not. I'm glad... Early in the second season, Zuko decides to leave the Fire Nation and uh, other people are after him. And I'm glad that in the third season, it's very much like they were defeated and now it's time to rise back up and it's the fight back. And how do you do it? Will it even be successful? Because now they're introducing these uh, possibilities, at least in the realm of this world, that it w maybe it won't be successful. This was like their big moment and it totally got fucked up. So... I'm, I mean, even though we know it's going to turn out good in the end, again, Nickelodeon, um, you know, you know it's going to be all right, but you don't know how, and you don't know the journey that they're going to go through, and they make this journey so fascinating and so enjoyable and so heavy and so deep and so well thought out that I'm so looking forward to where this is going to go, and it doesn't just feel like repetitive writing. So I very much enjoy that they had this sort of in the middle of the third season and not the end. I think that was very, very clever, because now you don't know exactly where it's going to go. Or rather, how it's going to get there, I should say. So, oh, and you know, they do say what happened to the mother. I had so many people sending me messages like, yeah, you never find out what happens to the mother. That's never explained. You know, she's banished. I mean, that's... That's all I need. I, I don't need to really know what happens to her afterwards. If I do, great. If not, I totally accept the fact that it's just something she has to live with. I was referring more to why was she leaving? And they do. They say that she's banished. So that totally makes sense. I'm cool with that. If that's where they stop, that's fine. Uh, and I do know there's a comic. Someone actually gave me the comic at the uh, uh, the con, was it The, the Promise? Uh, and I didn't look through it much because I'm like, I gotta wait till I, I get through the season. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's I'm totally cool with that, and it 
I have to read what happens to her, that's fine too, but if they didn't go into any more detail, that's fine, you know, that's, that's life. Sometimes you never find out where these people go. Uh, I would say the only other nitpick before I wrap up here, uh, you know, they finally show this Fire Lord, and they've been building up his appearance, they've been keeping him in shadow, and when they finally see him, he's not scarred and disfigured, and so he's this very almost peaceful looking person. I think that's much more frightening. And I was kind of looking forward to a little bit more, sort of like maybe the Emperor from Star Wars, that's the best comparison I could come up with right now, where Everything is sort of in his court. Even if things go wrong, it's sort of like he, he wouldn't show it. He would be very heartless and almost uh, have no emotion. When Zuko confronts him, though, he seems legitimately like, What? Why would you lie about that? Oh, you little scurvy, you little punk. You know, oh, so you're going to do this now? Well, and I, I would have liked it if there was a little less emotion. I think that's when he looks the most frightening and the most scary. Um... Anything else just sort of makes him look like, I don't want to say a thug, but sort of like your traditional villain. And this is like the top guy. This is your Hitler. This is your everyone wants to figure out what the hell's going on inside his mind type character. And, they, and that made him almost a little too simple. Um, and sometimes a villain is very simple, even the ones we think are the most complicated. But I don't know. That, I could have seen something a little bit more there. But they also do address sort of the idea behind the Fire Nation and why this takeover was happening. Sort of, I don't want to say why there's still good people in the Fire Nation, but what the ideology is. And I think they did in the backstory with uh, the Avatar and the Fire Lord. And here, with Zuko really realizing how much the world hates the Fire Nation and how it's actually justified. Uh, that he was actually sort of under this delusion that they were spreading something good and maybe that was kind of the original intention of the Fire Nation, but now it's gotten from spreading something good and making it all equal, the ultimate equalizer, whether the world realizes it's good for it or not, to just keeping the power. It's no longer what is best, what they feel is best for the world, it's just about keeping that power. And I, I think that was pretty effective, and I think it's so easy just to show Evil Empire and that's it, and the show I mean, in the opening, they have to simplify, I mean, this very complex backstory uh, in its opening very quickly. I think they do a pretty good job, but there is sort of this fear, oh, is this just going to be they're bad and that's it? Uh, and no, they, I, I think in something, it, it may be something that's a little bit more, I don't want to say more adult, but in in something that wasn't just meant for families, it, I shouldn't even say that, what, what's the word I'm looking for? In something that is, hey, this is only for adults, uh, and, and uh, screw the kids, you know, and screw the families, this is only for adults, they could have gone into more detail about it, but I think for a family show to get everybody involved, to still have everybody understand, to keep everybody on the page and keep coming back to it, they balanced it out pretty well, uh, explaining what they were originally trying to do and how it has sort of changed, how it has become just wanting to keep this status quo and keep all this power and control as opposed to wanting to do something better for the world. So I, I, I think that was a good balance. So, uh, yeah, that's a lot of talking, but again, it is two episodes and I greatly enjoyed it, uh, immensely looking forward to where it goes next. So, yeah, uh, I'll see you wherever it goes next.